Ready? All right. Okay, folks, we are in a massive rain delay here at the Daytona 500, but the upside to all of this is me and Brent prepped all night last night because we knew we'd have a few <laughs> minutes with Rick here. So before I even get to all the homework we did last night, what is it like as an owner with two cup teams when it just downpours for two days like this? What's this? What's, what goes through your brain? What's the first thing that comes to mind? Those sort of things. What's your thoughts when the rain happens like this? Well, from an owner's standpoint, the first thing is more hotel rooms, more cost, et cetera, right? So that's all part of the management of this. Uh, on the racing side, you know, you, you get built up, uh, you're excited for it, but you, you also kind of want to get it done also, right? You want, you want, to, you want to see the fruits of all the, the hard work and the labor. Um, and you're nervous because you just you want to know is it going to work out okay we're going to go fast we're going to get wrecked you know right. what's going to happen so um, the anybody that's been around in motorsports whether you're at a dirt track standing around in the mud or short track you know you you just walk around in pace and you tell the same stories and you talk and this and that and you small talk and then you tell more racing stories and at some point it's just like everybody wants to get the race on and uh, you know, an event at this level, there is so much dynamic behind, you know, even rescheduling uh, because it, it's all about television and it's not just picking a date. It's um, what are they going to show for the, the existing six hours they're supposed to have today? And, yeah. and you know, uh, and then, you know, can they get it in tomorrow and those kind of things. So it's um, it's all part of it. Um, you know, it's I've been stuck at places that are uh, less fun to be stuck in, for sure. Yeah. Uh, I love being at Daytona because we've just had a lot of success in all kinds of different things, and it's just it kind of a, is the um, it truly is the world center of speed. So. And look at this backdrop we got. It's hard That's to be right. too, too mad about that. Yeah, it's pretty cool. <laughs> well, and it's cool if you if you've walked here and see the plaques down. Uh -huh. uh, the, 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 to read about the guys that were coming here from overseas yeah. and trying to go 200 or trying to go 100 and then 200 and then 300 and you know the, the, the people that gave up their lives and yeah. you know just it's uh, uh, a lot of stuff happened here on the beach for sure so I'm gonna direct my next question towards Brent over here PFI speed Brent folks for the That's people amazing. that uh, are tuned in to RWR TV here so Brent is a YouTube star he's a tuner he's a known for his Honda stuff, but this yeah. is your very first experience ever at a NASCAR event. Yeah. It's been a little bit of wet and rain delayed, but we did get the, the duels in. What's yeah. it been like for you so far? The duels were fantastic. I mean, that, just the rush of the cars coming past you at 190 miles an hour was just incredible. So I was really looking forward to seeing them all today, but you know, I'm gonna hang out and watch tomorrow because I gotta see it, you know. <laughs> but I love, you know, watching all the teams work together. And, uh, you know, you almost wanna dive in and and uh, help out where you could, you know, because I don't know, it's just, it's awesome to see the hard work and, and the tech and all the stuff in the background because there's so much going on. You know, as a team owner, you probably, you know, you're used to it, but it's really neat to see these guys really put all their in, you know, but making this happen. You so. know what you've tickled me about is all the carts and all the way they yeah. move all the equipment. That he's been yeah. fascinated. But it yep. it's a normal thing for you and, and yeah. I've been to enough races it's kinda is for me, but I love he's been stuff. just fascinated by just how the crew yeah. guys y'all literally set your pits up, do the duels, yeah. put take it all apart move those carts I mean it's it's pretty impressive it's uh you're moving on a small circus on a regular basis and a lot of things that people don't even quite understand is that it's a separate tractor trailer that brings all these wheels if you think about it there's yeah. 40 some cars here and we all have I mean I don't even know 15 sets of wheels or something wow. uh, they all got to get unloaded they all have to get broke down they got to get mounted dismounted um, uh, so it's like and there's also tractor trailers that bring these pit boxes uh, years ago you know, we brought 12 wheels and, you know, mounted and unmounted them multiple times yeah. and brought a little pit box in between the rails. And so now we have these, they call them condo boxes, whatever you want to call them. They're, they're huge because Amazing. you have to have them. Otherwise you stand out if you don't have them and you got to keep the sponsors happy. And so now there's a, um, a mechanism for the transportation of that, transportation of, of the wheels. Uh, we fit all of the stuff that we typically need to unload to get through tech. You know, yeah. we have our tech box, we have our generator, 
um, or three wheel carts that have all the different jacks and stands and all the stuff a little bit unique to these new cars. And it's a, uh, uh, it's a process that, you know, it's just second nature. Yeah. Uh, all the different racing, is, it's all unique in its own way. It's very similar to, you know, I can't take these NASCAR guys and go, hey, you guys got 70 minutes from pulling the chute to pulling a motor down to the bare yeah. block and servicing right. the blower and the clutch. and whatever. It just can't be done. I mean, everybody is a specialist in what they do. Um, and it, it's, uh, I, I really enjoy the management side of putting together the race teams and the people that can do all that. And then I then really appreciate, you know, I'm impressed all the time, right? Yeah. Even with the guys that, that I've put together, of like, man, we've really stepped up. Our, our cup program and, and just the people we have. We've really stepped up the, the fuel yeah. program. Um, yeah. At the end of the day, it's really just about people. I mean, in theory, anybody can get all these pieces, yeah. right, and go buy them or whatever, but it, it's all about the people. And yeah. But it's really cool to see somebody that's never been. I've probably brought more people to fuel races that haven't been because the NASCAR schedule is just so consuming. And a lot of the cup guys also do some things on Xfinity or trucks, so it yeah. just consumes you all year long. Yeah. And uh, it's great to see somebody that, you know, that you can say 300 miles an hour, but it doesn't mean anything until you see it. Right. But, it, yeah. but, didn't, but then there's also something to be said to see in 40 cars go by, you know, nose to tail three wide at 190, 200 as well. So yeah. just cool stuff. Apart. Yeah. 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 You know, they're so close. Or no other. inches apart. Yeah. yeah. Pushing. Yeah. yeah. Well, and as you've seen in the truck series and even, you know, in our duels, uh, it's all great until it's not great. Right. <laughs> and then it goes not great in a hurry, so. And so, I, really, I really appreciate the strategy that goes into it as well when they're on the track. So that's another big part that really interested me that night. I found myself, once, once I got past the, you know, the excitement of the cars blasting by, it was like, now watch the strategy start to happen and, and watching them start to really work. And that, that in itself is like a, a chess game. Yes, yeah. like a chess yeah, absolutely. game. Like a chess game. Neat. Yeah. So Rick owned, owned kind of that, a little bit of the NASCAR thing there. So what are your expectations, not just for this weekend, but you mentioned you've put more people in place and you obviously have hired Justin Haley full-time for this year. So kind of at the end of the year or just through parts, bits and parts of the season, where do you see the RWR cars? You got, you got a good little kid in there driving full-time. Yep. I mean, what's your expectations for the for the NASCAR team this year? You know, to to have more top twenties. Um, you know, if you're a passive fan, sometimes it sounds like uh, you're rolling over, right, and you're giving up. But uh, to be top twenty in this garage on a regular basis is is very very tough to do. Um, but to have more top twenties, more lead lap finishes, be in a situation to where if the stars are aligned, we can have top fives, which we've had a few of, mm -hmm. top tens. Um, but to be in a situation to where, you know, when the stars align, places like Daytona and Talladega, small teams can pull off that win. Yeah. Uh, and it, it's happened a fair amount over the past. And, um, but you still have to do everything right. You know, uh, you, you have to do a lot of preparation to become lucky and, and to get yourself in a situation. You can uh, run up front for a little bit, but to can to, to stay running in the top 10, that's where you got to be to be able to right. get, get, get the right line. To, yeah. When they go three wide, to pick the right, you know, you know inside yeah. groove, outside groove. I, I just expect to be better than we were last year, and we were better than than that than the year before. And it, um, it, in this one particular series, you have to be um, very cautious in how, uh, I guess, uh, excited you get because the, the volume and the odds are against everybody, right? right? I mean, at the end of the day, the odds are against everybody to win. So, right, you know, somebody right. has to win. Yep. Um, you know, getting through the races uh, are, are tough. And just, you know, when we've stepped up our motor program and then uh, some of our engineering and technology, you still factor in, okay, where well, our weak leak now is, you know, we've got to start stepping up our, our pit crew. And, you know, we have one pit crew uh, with Stuart Haas and one pit crew with uh, Joe Gibbs. Uh, and we're trying to elevate those things because we got to where we were running relatively respectable and we would come in the pit stops and man, we're giving up half of everything we fought for or more. And, and so that's tough because I, you know, even new you've seen where track position means a lot. It, yeah. You know, it, it's uh, the cars in the competition are so close now. Um, you can't just, you know, maybe at a short track or road course, you can dive bomb and like pick up something. Right. 
um, it, it's for sure, you know, it's kind of cliche, it's a 200 mile an hour chess game, but it really kind of is. Yeah. And you've seen people that are uh, a little bit more patient, a little bit better in, in moving forward. Uh, some are more aggressive and you get, you know, a little more bold and sometimes it pays off, sometimes you can make yeah. enemies. Um, so it's uh, every race that we go to, I, I wanted to feel like, uh, regardless of the finish, that we are more prepared and are, are better off the trailer. Um, we, we achieve that uh, at the Clash, uh, running better uh, for sure, and we've achieved that here uh, with both cars. Um, you know, um, Justin's our full-time guy, but they're, you know, we, we, we put the effort into both, you know, both cars equally. I think everybody um, that drives, it's his teammate this year, are, is going to learn and um, uh, we're, we're, you know, he has a lot to bring to the table. Yeah. I mean, he's still a kid, yeah. technically, but he's got a lot of experience. And, um, it's all he's ever done. Yeah, and so, you know, and, and he just, you know, he's one of the kids that, you know, he's, he's you know, by the time he can walk, somebody was planning on getting him in yeah. something with wheels. Yeah. And so it shows. Um, so, you know, he's, you know, we're both barely 25, I guess, and he's, you know, kind of the team leader, you know, so to speak, yeah. just as far as what we're going to be leaning on him. Yeah. And um, I think so far, um, he seems to be really happy, and we're planning on keeping him happy. Yeah. You know, yeah. So, so you said something there, and that's not on my question list. But you said stepped up the motor program. So immediately, as a drag racer, I'm like, oh, we bought, we bought better heads. We got a better supercharger. But I know these motors are so inspected, so looked at. When you say stepped up the motor program, what's that mean? So, you know, um, two years ago, we owned basically all of our own motors, and they were good motors. Uh, we um, re rebuilt them in theory in-house. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and um, we would lease motors uh, once in a while for some big, big events and yeah. stuff. Um, but then we stepped up to leasing motors full-time last year. Um, kind of, I guess you would say it was um, kind of like a, a B-plus program, A-minus kind of scenario. Yeah. Um, and so we started uh, running better with the motors about mid-season last year. And, uh, you know, this year we started stepping up the program uh, to what we call the Tier 1. Um, so in theory, we have the same motor program as everybody in Ford. Now, in some of the rotations, using common sense, you know, they don't build 14 motors at the same time. So one of yeah. them gets dynoed. Uh, there may be a slight difference, but people would be surprised how close it is. Um, the, the biggest thing is, you know, um, the evolution of continually working with cam profiles, manifold profiles that really create the horsepower. Yeah. So it, let's just say they don't even find so much in horsepower, but maybe they'll find more in acceleration, which yeah. at the end of the day, it's about ET or lap time, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, if they come up with something and they only have three or four motors, typically those are going to probably go to, you know, the, the 12 car or, or something or the 22 or, or, or wherever, uh, in, in theory. Now, I'm not saying that that's always the case, but um, when you update anything, there has to be a time period before it filters down. So we ultimately get those. We may just not get them the week it happens. It may be three or four weeks or three or four races down the road. But uh, dramatically better stuff. You know, we... When we stepped up, um, you know, we picked up two to three tenths um, a straightaway. That's a lot. Right. So, yeah. you know, it, it's a lot. Um, you, you can give it all back if you don't have the right setup, right engineers, yeah. the right pit crew, you know. But um, as a racer, you, you have all these checklists. And it's like, well, here are the things for sure that we know that we need. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, with RFK, you know, part of the checklist is uh, getting more information. Uh, but then we got the information, and then we needed more depth to facilitate and to use all, it all because yeah. it's like drinking from a fire hose. It, it's yeah. like saying, okay, you know, I want to know how to build an airplane. Okay, here, go, go start building. Okay, <laughs> whoa, okay, you know, yeah. it's like, you know, I want to make sure I'm not going to crash this thing. So, <laughs> yeah. so you know, you, you getting the information is one thing. Uh, utilizing it and making sure it's implemented correctly is, yeah. is the next step. So it, it, it's yeah. an everlasting gobstopper of things. It's, it's okay. it, and, you know, on the drag race analogy, you know, you can do like we did. We got a killer new co crew chief and a clutch guy, and, and we have all these ideas, but you got to start somewhere. And it's going to be like, okay, well, we're going to make these changes. Um, what I like about drag racing is in a day, we can make a bunch of, you know, 330 passes or full passes, and yeah. in four seconds, we're going to have the answers and we yeah. work on the next thing, as opposed to sometimes things we try here, it takes four hours 
to get the race over. And you may know into the first hours, like, that didn't work. It's going to be a long three hours. Yeah. And so, yeah, you know. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I hear that. But, you know, from what he was just talking about, um, one of the questions someone had was, again, for Rick, was how exciting is it to have Nick Bonafane part of the team now? It's very exciting. It, uh, really the, the equivalent of getting Jim O on uh, for multiple reasons. Um, you know, we're trying to build our field program, and again, it's about people. And before I ever ventured down my dream of always wanting to have a field team forever, and it's taken a long time to do, if you follow racing like I do, you know, pretty in depth, you know, all different series, you know, I saw a transition in the late 80s, early 90s, and for sure at the end of the 90s and the 2000s, where, I mean, you used to have one crew chief. Yeah. And they did most of everything, right? And then all of a sudden, you know, guys are getting two crew chiefs. And I'm like, man, well, I realized two crew chiefs are also stronger for the team. But then I also realized from an owner, it's like, but that's also keeping a crew chief from somebody else you're racing against. Right. And then, you know, as, as guys like Force and some of these teams, they expand, it's like, well, now there's four crew chiefs for three cars. And, yeah. and now he's owning, in theory, you know, three entities of technology and knowledge. Yeah. So really excited. Uh, our, I think our weakest link, um, you know, when I've asked Jimbo and Clay, it's like, okay, you know, where, where can, how can we fix this? Um, we knew our toughest part was 330 feet to 660. In that area right there, yeah. we were giving it up. Yeah. Um, on really hot tracks, I think we, um, I wouldn't say dominated, but we were for sure a favorite everywhere we, we went and we, we, we showed well and had our wins on hotter tracks. Um, uh, but, you know, getting just one piece of the puzzle is great. You can go hire somebody and if they just piss everybody off, yeah. you didn't get anywhere, right? And I've been down that road in every type of form of racing that we've had and um, it doesn't work. And so, you know, we put together a list of, well, who could we get? And the list was really pretty short. It was like two or three people. And I think there was only an option for maybe one or two of them. And for sure at the top of the list was Nikki. And of course, Nikki was already with somebody. And, um, you know, as an owner, I reached out and said, hey, you know, if I could get you mid-season, I'll, I'll take you, right? And, um, you know, he wanted to um, keep his word to Dell. And I totally yeah. respected that because if I was on the other side, you know, um, I've got to know Dell through Clay and the guys and you know, have a lot of respect for him. I was a huge fan of him uh, when he was driving and then into his ownership as well. Um, so it was, uh, we really got our butt handed to us at a handful of races last year because of clutch related issues. So it's really good because it's been six months of I've been chomping at the bit, yeah. you know, and um, uh, he's melded very well. Yeah. Uh, fortunately, he's, he's close to where our new home base is now in North Carolina because we've, we've moved everything there over a year ago and 90% um, uh, of our whole force is, is right there. Yeah. And so um, I've, uh, I understand the fly-in mentality, but it is always a little less of accountability with that. And I've never liked that with any kind of yeah, racing that either. we do. Yeah. Um, and so um, Jimbo spends a lot of time in from Plano and Nikki's only a couple hours away so he can be there you know, uh, for long periods of time. And, you know, the, the first race this year at the pro shootout showed um, that for sure was a step in the right direction yeah. because um, all the testing we did in those areas immediately were very strong and fast. Um, it parlayed into getting down the track. And, um, you know, we were, even if we were fortunate enough to win, we were still three and four mile an hour off, which meant we were really strong in other places, but it, it's kind of tough to do on some of the tracks. So. Yeah. Now we got the mile an hour. Um, you know, this guy has, you know, at least two or three passes under his belt <laughs> in his career. And, and, you know, we got him as the highest top speed in his whole career, yeah. right? Yeah. The, our first weekend out. Yeah. And so I'm like, that's, that's pretty good. cool. So yeah. it's pretty easy to get jacked up because, yeah. um, and I think, uh, I think we scuffed a couple sleeves. Maybe. Uh, yeah. Maybe. Yeah. I, I mean, so for, from a, an owner's standpoint, I was like, man, you know, I, you know, we haven't really started leaning on it. So when we start leaning on it and hurting some stuff, we're going to be going quicker and yeah. faster. Yeah. So I know some of y'all are going, oh, you know, I was one of the big pile of people that watched. We pulled a main stud out. That that yep. was our damage. And we had oil pressure problem. Yeah. We fixed all that. But you're right. Overall, it was like essentially for running a nitro car. Yes. That whole week of testing yep. was really good. 
And I'm I want to ask I want to ask a fun question now. And these questions all come in from you guys, and this is a fun one for you, Rick. The question is: Would you ride with me in a two-seat top fuel dragster? Uh, as long as my wife, you know, <laughs> didn't didn't, didn't uh, leave me, um, you can bungee cord me into your lap, and I would. Like, <laughs> I, I, uh, um, you know, my wife has become my teammate over this, but she's a little less tolerant as I've gotten older. Um, my dream still is to uh, make some launches, passes. Uh, you know, I just, you know, yes, e e easy, yes, all day long. <laughs> what about you, Brent? Oh, yes. Would you ride with me? 100%. 100%. <laughs> I rode with you in control of a stacker car. Yeah, that was good Although time. I was in control. <laughs> <laughs> the difference is, is you can't hold your breath that long. He, yeah. You can at least hold your breath and close your eyes for three and a half, four seconds, That's right? True. So that you is can be true. In fear for oh. on, on other fun kind of questions, and again, this is for you. And, and actually, I think you had wrote something down similar. Are we going to do more collabs with, uh, like the whole, like the Cletus deal? Uh, is, that, is that something you see us doing? Absolutely. Um, I want to, you know, we're going to roll out some other marketing campaigns this year that we're going to have on the cup car. We're going to have on your fuel car. Uh, going to be tied into some of the flat track stuff we're doing. You know, we, we've talked about this for a long time. And, and the problem is, you know, we all are off in different directions and it's yeah. so tough to make things happen. So um, spending some time with him, kind of seeing, you know, first off, you know, he's in demand, right? So, yeah. so you have to decide you know, what are some of the things that he wants to do? What's on his bucket list, right? right? Because right, he's yeah. got his list too, um, you know, and why don't you check off, you know, helicopters and army tanks through drive throughs <laughs> and stuff. I mean, it's like, what's left, right? So, but he has a lot of things uh, in relation to drag racing and he, even in some of the, yeah. the NASCAR stuff, some of the, the, maybe the Mazda road racing we're doing that, that would be tied into you. So we're gonna be doing a, a lot more of that um, we're gonna try to figure out how to intertwine it as much as possible. You know, I'm a little more old school learning just how this, you know, I know how it works, but to see it and, and to work it and, you know, just watching yeah. you, Brent, with the guy, it's, it's amazing. Yeah. It really is just, it, and it's totally cool and so foreign of how it works. And that's where I think you're ahead of the curve in a lot of ways because not many other teams or other people have jumped on the YouTube bus and that, you know, being able to uh, interact with your fans and, and people that follow you is a huge part of things. They like to know what's on the inside and what's going on in the background yeah. and what you're up to. You know, they love to watch the racing, but there's a real interest to know what's leading up to it and then how it how it went in the background, like what it yeah. took to get there to do it. Yeah. And I think YouTube is just a great way to share that with people and uh, it really invites them into yeah. the family. And I think that's what we did that whole week. Yeah, well, really, yeah. it was really neat. Well, it's just to be high on the scenes. You know, we, we, we're a little spoiled because we, we kind of come and go in a real hurry. And again, taking people that have been in NASCAR for decades and you get them to a field deal and they just stand there. And, and I remember one, I brought a crew chief one time in particular, and he loved to see the cars do the launch and everything. But he was just mesmerized seeing seven guys all working, not like yelling and pissed off and like dropping stuff, but oh, like, yeah. it, it like, it, it's pretty amazing. Yeah, and, it is. and, um, you know, it, it's, it, it's, uh, from, I don't care what, uh, what division of motorsports you, you, you have respect for everybody that, that does a good job in every right. different facet. Right. Um, but it's very easy to see in, uh, in NHRA in that aspect. And yeah. so, so my point being is behind the scenes, yeah. people just don't know. And if they see cars line up and go, um, you know, 500 miles or whatever, but yeah. it's really all the behind the scenes and the craziness it, and, and the tech in NASCAR is second to none. I, I mean, yeah. it, it is so yeah. critical, so consuming down to the to thousands of, of, of measurements in, in Hawkeyes and laser measurement. Yeah. It, it's, um, you know, it, 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 we used to have to have motor failures and changing all the time. They used to be part of it. Now we don't, the motors are so reliable now that we don't have that as an issue. Uh, but but we have all of the other crashing and tech, et cetera. And then typically, you know, unlike a couple of races at the end of last year, we don't have to replace chassis in, in, in drag racing. It's all about the motor and fix and clutch. Yeah. You know, all the work is in, in I, I was telling uh, Robbie, your president, you know, all the work is in a four foot radius, typically, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, every once in a while, it goes 30 feet, yeah. you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I wanted to say 
on the YouTube thing that I have been very fortunate in the fact that covers this covers a lot of bases. One, that I got into it, and two, I've had this guy that that I kind of kind of held my hand and has got me going with it. But probably the biggest part of all of that is you. Previous to that, Doug Stringer, and especially. Jim O has allowed me to share all of Be that. Open. You know, yeah. most teams that ain't happening. Yeah. Got in some trouble stuff. once a little we bit. We have but, got in some trouble. <laughs> but, we have. but yeah. But I mean, you've been open and I, I mean, I, immediately you saw the value of it. I mean, our yep. sponsors love yep. it. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, yeah. The, yeah, it was it was a no-brainer. Yeah. Yeah, and I think also, you know, as it goes, there's a whole young generation. You want to be interested in what we're doing. You want them to learn and know and get excited about it. And to do so, showing some of this stuff and what it takes piques interest. And because, uh, you know, as we go in life, we need to have more young people come up and want to do it to keep it going. So that's another whole big part of it that yeah. I think YouTube does. Well, and you have to have. Uh... You have to have an entity or a driver that's that entity to be willing to do yeah. it too. Yes. I mean, you know, I've had to educate people and sponsorship and media that, you know, aren't versed in different things. And I'm like, you know, we have the Jimmy Johnson of drag racing and that, you know, pretty, pretty much if you don't like clay, there's probably something wrong with you. Right. <laughs> but then you have a bunch of people that just love clay and the fact that he's just accessible. Yeah. Right. And I'm going to say more so than, than any other racing yeah. athlete in motorsports that I deal with anyway, you know, yeah. and you know, when we go to, home tracks like Bristol uh you know I remember th this year last year I mean you know he I mean he was exhausted like wore out because everybody wants to talk to him then when they if they can get to him it's always hey, I, I got a quick story well the story <laughs> is you know the story turns into two minutes into five minutes Man. and and nobody wants to quit talking to him and so it's like it's just tough, but he's there nonstop for everybody. Right. And he so, is the people's champ. Right? Yeah, for <laughs> sure. Is, is for fact. sure. That's so cool. Oh, so I feel like we're sitting here talking about me. How did how did we meet? That's a pretty cool story. I don't want to tell that story. I'm gonna let you tell it. Well, I, yeah, I've always been terrible at answering my emails. Just it just yes, gets, somebody else. I love it. Man. <laughs> I mean, it said 15, text, text only. It said 15k. Yeah. Like yeah. I never want to look in there. But it was Christmas morning, like 7.30 my time. Um, and I was like, you know, I'll just peek in there. Christmas morning. I look in there and the top email is Clay Milligan. I'm like, what? And so I clicked on it and it was, I hope you have a Merry Christmas. Huge fan, been following you. I was like, oh, what? <laughs> so I immediately emailed back and then shot my phone number. Next thing you know, we just texted throughout the entire day. And it was like, you know, it was just like a long lost brother almost. Yeah. We just immediately hit right. it off and and it hasn't slowed down since, honestly. No. It is just maybe gain speed and, and here we are now. You know, this is a it's been an exciting ride. And I yeah, I can't thank you enough but, <laughs> you know, he's opened a lot of doors for me because here I am yep. with you and and then even meeting you and the vibe's so good and the family's so good. It's just like, you know, these are the people that will make racing great and and that's where the Lord put me. I just love it. So it's, I, it's, it's magical. On that note, you're sitting here with, with Rick. I got to read this one word for word. I wrote it down. And it's <laughs> just bear with me here. How did a homeless tuner from a dusty <laughs> shop on an abandoned turkey farm on the frigid plains of North Colorado end up basking in the limelight, rubbing elbows with drivers and an owner of all these teams? <laughs> Many <laughs> prayers and being excited. You know, that, that's how it happened, I think. You know, um, I have a huge passion for motorsports, as you know, and it doesn't matter what they are. They're engines, and we can tweak them, and we can make something better. Um, I just absolutely love it. You know, when he's talking about the technology and NASCAR and how they're down to the thousands, that's what I enjoy. It's finding that thousand, finding that little bit just to make it that much better. And uh, it's just, it has been just a, an amazing ride. I think the love of motorsports has brought us all together. In yeah, that, that's the, the thing, the, the crux of it is it has to be that innate love of, and the smell yeah. of gasoline. And we know our people. And, yeah. I love that question, though. I wrote it down yeah. word for word. I thought, that's really good. Your tribe finds you is what, you know, I've been yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Exactly. Oh, man. So this one's a tough one, Rick. And, and we've got this in multiple different ways. 
<laughs> Are race teams ever profitable? I, I read a story once. <laughs> there was a guy named Ben Hur. He, he was in a chariot race, and I think he won, and I, he got a wreath and something, you know. So that's, um, first off, it's not a quick answer. Uh, in theory, there are businesses, and in all businesses, if they're not profitable and, and never have the potential to be profitable, they're probably just hobbies, right? And um, uh, so, you know, this is all we do for a living. And so uh, the quick answer is not all race teams are profitable. Uh, some have been really profitable. Some have been uh, okay. Uh, if, uh, and, and that's the end result, right, for the answer. Um, a lot of different people do it for different reasons. Um, it, it, I don't care. At the end of the day, you have to be a, a really love racing to, to be involved in any of the upper tier motorsports. Um, your typical race owner um, has uh, multiple other businesses or, or very wealthy, you know, people or, um, you know, and decide to, you know, use it as a marketing platform for their business and their, their B2B. You know, um, you know, Gene Haas is a perfect example of of he utilizes um, and leveraged and has grown his CNC company worldwide because of that. Um, for us in particular, um, there have been some that are profitable, uh, some that are not profitable, but since this is all we do for a living, um, at the end of the day, uh, if all the bills uh, are at least getting paid on time, I'm not saying paid off, right, because you're continually reinvesting in this business all the time. Um, so there was a time when uh, one entity uh, was profitable because of the sponsor and the B to D, B the B that we put together. Uh, another entity, you know, NASCAR has been a continual reinvestment even before the charter came. So mm -hmm. when um, uh, we went into, you know, uh, a lot of debt to, to sell everything we have to go get our first charter, well, um, it, it's going to take three or four years to ever even pay that off. So technically you're not profitable, but you're moving forward, you have a cash flow, uh, and y you need cash flow in this business. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we survive like any business that grows off of the cash flow, and um, you continue to pay off bills yeah. and, and grow. Why we've done what we've done uh, with the multiple uh, entities is it's gotten to be so competitive in the motorsports world. Um, you know, sponsorship in the, in the original term sponsorship uh, just about doesn't exist anymore and so uh, there are marketing budgets and in those marketing budgets they need to move a lot of people in and out of races they need to have hospitality they need to have functions they need to go to trade shows all these things you know parts plus and pronto has over four thousand entities and yeah you could say well they sponsor the program or are we part of a marketing program that moves thousands of people in and out of events all year long yep. uh, trade shows etc and when you go to a company that is getting hit by all these other forms of motorsports, from whether it's IndyCar, NASCAR, drag racing, um, you have to have something somebody else doesn't offer. And so what we've was worked for me and it was kept me alive and rolling forward. I'll try not to make this too long of an answer, but um, there's always a different entity of having dollars come in. And there have been a lot of times where NASCAR is kind of the 800 pound gorilla it's the cornerstone of what we've done for, you know, since my first NASCAR race uh, as a driver and, you know, co-owner with my dad of a car we built and loaded up on a trailer it was 1983, you know, in a NASCAR race. And so you continually have to feed this machine. And um, uh, we've lost sponsorship to other people for different reasons. Uh, now when you come in and involved with RWR, you, you, the goal may be uh, the, the, it, it, we're, we're about NHRA. But yes, we would for sure like to be, you know, be involved with the Daytona 500, the Indy 500, or something like that, and vice versa. So we've taken, uh, we have a sponsor this year that's on board on your car all year long that has been in NASCAR, uh, that really wanted to change focus because of the amount of hospitality that we can do. Um, doesn't mean that they won't still be involved in NASCAR, but they could really justify this. Uh, have some people that just love the whole um, uh, IT kind of um, scenario of the Indy car, et, et cetera. So. Uh, at the end of the day, you have to be able to be profitable at some point. Yeah. Um, but we, as a company, are continuing to reinvest. I mean, every year uh, we really got over the curve. I'm going to say uh, we were fortunate enough to get through COVID. You know, NASCAR was the only series on the planet to run all of their races, pay all of the, the, the prize money, 
uh, and got the season done in the same time frame. It's a testament to uh, Jim France and NASCAR because it was the only sporting entity in the world to do that. That really uh, it could have been costly for a lot of people. Um, we got through that. Uh, the new car uh, is made the, the series more competitive, uh, but it's been very costly and there's still some learning curves there. Um, so we're just reinvesting, but it, it is very expensive. At the end of the day, you'd be crazy to put up with the amount of phone calls and texts and 90% and of the time things don't go well. There's a problem, people are unhappy, stuff's wrecked, stuff's blowing up. You better love this, uh, you know, uh, you better love this sport a lot, you know. The, you know so there's God, then there's racing, right? <laughs> so, so um, you know, it needs to be second, uh, uh, you know. And, and I, I keep my wife, you know, she's, she's a given, right? So, right, right. But um, yeah. it's, um, you know, you, you just, you have to love it to be even marginally successful in anything you do. Because if you think more than a month down the road, it's like, this is crazy. I'm going to do what? I'm going to sacrifice what? But you, you follow what you love. You do it tomorrow, the next day. And, you know, if, if you love what you're doing, then um, you just keep digging to find it away. And, yeah. you know, Lord opens up opportunities. And, and now you're a YouTube superstar, man. And, <laughs> and you get to do all this stuff. But, you know, you, you have to be willing to take that risk. Yeah. And, and follow your passion. Right. It's, all, it's, it's no different than basketball players they, they shoot hoops all day you know from morning till yeah. till dawn until their feet are bleeding i mean you yeah. know you can't be successful on any level of sports anymore unless you're just all in yeah yeah 100 percent. so what you just said just leads us right into the next question was from one of the fans was how do i get into how do i get a job in racing how does somebody get into all of this to work for you or another team well, first off, you got to decide what capacity you want to be involved in racing. Um, you know, because there's, I mean, everybody's busy from the marketing side, the sponsorship side to, you know, sp specialists like clutch guys, crew chiefs, you know, anything in between. Um, you know, you probably, you're going to have to make some sacrifices. And it for sure helps, um, and if, you know, this may not fly well, but it for sure helps to do it younger when you don't have a wife and kids and you have a, a built in uh, responsibility base because yeah. it's a selfish business. I will say that. Right. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's a very selfish business. So but I'm not saying that it can't work because we've had people that have had, you know, the wife stand by them and they're like we're moving and I'm chasing my dream. Yeah. Um, once you decide where that is, is you, you know, we've had we had a kid. This is no lie. We had a kid. Man, I want to say he was 15 years old, and he'd be in the fan zone for the last three or four years uh, in NASCAR, and he'd just be yelling at us, you know, <laughs> and, you know, hey, you know, can you get, you know, so-and-so to sign something or whatever, or unfortunately when we've tore up stuff, it's like, you know, can we have kind of part, of that, part of that fender or whatever, and he's <laughs> like, man, I'm going to school, and one day I want to come to work for you, I want to get, you know, I'm driving go-karts and just want to go, 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 and of course, you know, I get it, because I was there, right? I yeah, mean, yeah. so I get yeah. it, I spent time with him next year, the next year. So uh, last year we ran, um, I think we raced here in September, whatever it was, uh, the second Daytona race. And um, he's like, man, I'm going to be, he's from Florida, I'm going to be moving to go to the NASCAR school. And I'm like, well, cool. And he's like, man, can I intern? I, I, whatever I got to do. And I'm like, well, okay, let, let me, we'll get you hooked up with Robbie. He went and talked to him, he introduced him, and he just didn't quit. Right, yeah. and so he he made the commitment, and um, man, he's going to go from zero to drinking out of a fire hose. And <laughs> yeah. um, we, we've had other people that are that are older that have just graduated out of college and didn't quite know that either have a, an engineering degree and realize that you know they they still love racing. Um, you, you have to be persistent. Uh, it's hard to I will say it's hard to get a job um, without being local. You know, to say like, you know, yeah. come in for a little bit as opposed to, um, you know, hey, you know, I, I'll leave tomorrow if you hire me. That's, that's pretty yeah. tough to do. Because here's one thing that people don't understand uh, if you want to work on race cars. Um, you know, if you're, if you're wanting to prove that you can make a, a sandwich or spaghetti and it tastes terrible, yeah. you just cost somebody three or four or five bucks and pissed them off or something, right? You make a mistake here. I mean, I, I've had people that probably shouldn't have had opportunities that have catastrophically cost us a lot of money and hurt people, right? So, um, yeah. you know, it's, um, 
Uh, if I said, hey, I got a guy, man, he's been dying to pack your shoots. Yep. What do you think? Yep. You'd be like, yeah, i tell you what, I don't know, right? Yeah. And so, you know, you, you have to be willing to be local. You have to be willing to kind of work into it. Um, there's no right or wrong to do it. Um, but, you know, if you, want, if you want to work on a sprint car team, man, you better go to the local tracks and wherever it is, Ohio or Pennsylvania. Yep. And eventually, somebody's going to get tired of seeing you hang around, yeah. and you're going to help do something nobody wants to do. Push a car, clean it. Uh, fix it, take it apart because it's bent in two. You know, eventually some people want people that are serious. Yeah. Um, it um, uh, it's, it's hard to get into. It'd be no different if uh, I was outside of my element and right now and said, "Hey, man, I, you know, I want to, you know, I'm, I'm dying to work on airplanes." Yeah. <laughs> it would yeah. be like, well, you know, you can touch things that maybe are important for yeah. takeoff, but nothing yeah. on landing. You yeah. know. Yeah. So. Yep. You know, I get that a lot. You know, hey, I want to come volunteer. You know, and, and that's awesome. I appreciate that people, and I can't speak on the NASCAR side, obviously, 25 plus years on, in the nitro world, but it's a scary proposition to have somebody volunteer because you just mentioned it. One little thing, especially in a nitro car, is instant volatility. Like mm -hmm. right now, yep. kaboom, you know, can cost you a lot of money, can, can hurt somebody. But what I always tell people that, that ask me, and I get it a lot, how do I do this? And I quote my mom on this all the time, you gotta have the want to. And it's very much in the drag race world, it's like joining the service because somebody's gonna tell you when to get up, when you're eating, where you're staying, and where we're hitting the road. Yeah. And it just goes over and over and over. It, it, it's, it's not about the money you make, it's not about anything other than the want to. I want to do this so badly that I'm willing to give up a normal life. Anything that you think is normal, it all becomes all consumed with that nitro burning machine. And people ask, you know, how do I get that job? Yeah. It's just like you said, you got to show up. I always recommend people show up with a resume in hand. You know, just it doesn't, you don't even have to know how to work on cars. I, yeah. I, I've told the story of Austin, who's become a huge value to our team. The kid did not know what a 9 16 wrench was when he showed up. And now he's building our short blocks for a 12,000 horsepower yep. car. But he wanted to. Yep. And I even said he's not going to make it. But he had the want to enough that he... And he, he also went through some crew chiefs that were very hard to work oh, with it, it was zero tolerances he right? was he so, was heat treated yeah he was yeah, absolutely yeah. heat treated and that's another sign of the want to he took some of the worst you know tongue lashings ever yep. you know but you know so I, I just tell you know I, I say kids but show up with a resume just yeah. just walk around give them to a crew guy give them to a crew chief and the number one thing of course you got to be 21 for this if you get a CDL <laughs> your, your, your slot, yeah. you, you move from, from this filing cabinet to this filing cabinet. Yep. It's because we got a lot of equipment, we move up and down the road. Yes. Yeah, like you said, he's got a trailer just full of tires. Well, you know, in, in, in drag racing, um, uh, the CDL drivers are also integral into the, the actual working oh, yeah, crew. Yeah. Yep. Uh, and, and in NASCAR, the, the schedule, the CDL drivers, and a lot of people love doing that. Um, it's a little bit different than working on the cars because yeah. it, it, it's the everlasting gobstopper on the road nonstop. Right. But, um, you know, volunteers, I hear a lot of times, you know, hey, you know, I'll volunteer, you know, you fly me in, get me a rental car in a room, I'm good to go. And it's like, well, so I'm going to spend a couple thousand bucks to see if you're any good. Yeah. I, I still say um, you need to, it helps if, if it's, you're something local. If you come yeah. to the shop because somebody's always going to go, all right, man, help us unload this stuff. Help, yeah. you know. Yeah. You know, hey, let's get the let's get the new guy all dirty, right? Yep. Let's have, you know, hey, get rid of this old oil. Let, let's pull this. Get, you take all the dirty clutch stuff, right? Yep. You know, yep. there, there's always something. You have to be willing to do that. Uh, I know for a fact. You know, I remember uh, sleeping in the back of uh, um, uh, you know freaking pickup trucks to go work on people's cars, um, uh, race cars with the hope that I might get to drive one of them, yeah. right? And be, because I, you know, again, I never dreamed or wanted to be an owner. You know, it's all about driving, right? Driving yeah. is what it's all about. And so, um, but at the same time, 
you still had to prove yourself. And so if you're serious about doing it and you show up or, you know, you, the, your college education may be the money that you have to spend in savings to go like, you know what, I'm going to commit to showing up these 17 races this year. Yep. And, and eventually somebody's going to go, man, you're here all the time. Eventually somebody's going to go, well, I need you to do this on a Wednesday or whatever. And then all of a sudden the team's going to go like, well, I guess you're on my payroll now or you're on my dollar, right? right. It's just, you know, um, and if you, if you understand pit crews over the wall in NASCAR or, or in the middle of a, uh, a motor change or a blow or top and stuff on a fuel car, there's nobody on the planet, I don't care how skilled you are, that you can just, you know, hop in the middle of the game. Right. You can't just be like, hey, man, I know I can throw a football. Put me in. Right. Yeah. I mean, you have to be there behind the scenes and understand what's going on. Oh, and all, so, all you got to do is yeah. go and go and look at uh, our video or Cletus's video when uh, McFarland racing hopped in to tear the motor down. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's not that simple. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah we're learning real quick. Yeah. Trial by fire. Yeah. Trial by fire. Exactly. Yeah. It's funny, you know, how that goes. And the, another good question for you both since you guys were just on that, would be, how did you get inspired to do this and who inspired you to do it? You go. You want me to go first? So for me, I grew up in a tiny little grocery store in a tiny little community, and my daddy drag raced, but he quit before I started. But all I heard about was, you know, drag racing, and <laughs> daddy took me to every kind of motorsport event you can imagine. I mean, the Daytona 500 before I can even remember. Sprint car races, watching Sammy Swindale. But the very first time I saw a top fuel dragster that I can remember, I'm gonna just guesstimate I was eight years old. I saw Big Daddy Don Garlitz at Lakeland Dragway in Lakeland, Tennessee. And that hit me in such a way that I just told myself somehow, some way, I'm going to do that. That that was that was the 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 spike that that stuck in me that made me want to do it. But I will also add to that that I love NASCAR racing. My oldest son named Kale. Yeah. Uh, if it would have been up to me, Dalton would have been named Kyle. But Donna Donna said that uh, yell, yelling at two boys, you know. You yeah, know, yeah. Kelly Kyle, Kelly yeah. Kyle is to, yeah. you know, we, sh they might not know who she's yelling at or who yeah, I'm yelling oh yeah, at. Yeah, absolutely. But uh, for me, you know, it was it was just the speed of nitro. That that was me. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, that is cool. As far as how I got here, that's a really long story. Right place, right time. Because I mean, I drove a forklift in a food warehouse for 11 years while racing on the weekends. So, but you know, to the point we were just talking about, you know. I guarantee you, when you're driving that forklift, all you're yeah. thinking about is, man, I got to get this new uh, new torque converter. Yep. I got, I got it. Yeah. We're going to the divisionals. We're going to regionals. We're going to the nationals. Mm -hmm. All of these things, and you know, you spent every night working on that car in between. Yep. Which is the difference between yeah. this sport and other sports. If if you said, um, man, I love throwing the basketball, but you had to build the net and the pole and weld it up and fix it and, and, and do it for four hours before you could go practice for <laughs> yeah. 15 or 20 minutes. And, and oh, by the way, if, if you missed the hoop, it's broken. You got to fix it again. <laughs> yeah. You know, you yeah. know th that's <laughs> some of the difference between racing and other scenarios. I, right. I, I'm very envious of people that love golf, love basketball, love things that they can do by themselves. Yeah. Uh, and I get it all still takes time and, and money to go to a club to, to play or whatever. But right. the point is, it, it, it's doable, right? Yeah. And it's like, how cool to be, is it is to do that? In, in motorsports, you can't hardly do anything by yourself, right? right. And right. it takes every night of the week to go make, what, five, 8.9 second passes in yeah. a super cop or something, right? right? right. So it, it, it's um, uh, the, the addiction level is at a whole other yeah, level. Yeah, it is, because you, know? you got to drag your family and friends along to make it happen. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. So how did you end up? <sighs> So I know that's a life story. But yeah, it, 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 so it, it's a it's a long story. But the, the short story is, um, I was a little fortunate growing up in Southern California in the mid. Uh, you know, I was born in '63, but you know, growing up late '60s, early mid '70s mm -hmm. in Southern California, um, it was the hotbed of fuel racing. It was the hotbed of road racing. Uh, NASCAR opened up 
opened up and closed the season in California at Riverside Raceway, and then, then ultimately at Ontario Speedway. My, my home track growing up as a driver in stuff I worked on was Riverside. Riverside literally ran uh, early on Formula One races, IndyCar, IMSA, Trans Am, NASCAR, uh, drag racing. So I grew up just like uh, enamored. Now, my first time ever to a racetrack was drag racing. Uh, I made my first full pass in a drag uh, uh, in a drag strip at six years old during intermission at Carlsbad Drag Strip. Uh, staged, got the lights, got the time slip. At the time, you know, this is a three horse Briggs and Strat. Right. At the time, I mean, it had to have been about a seven second pass, but it was probably more like forty five seconds, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But of course. like to to be there as a kid, yeah. and so at that time. Um, you know, all of drag racing, you know, they always talk about heydays, but for sure, uh, I remember going to Carlsbad, who my dad was racing, a 68, uh, I think back then it was, I think C modified production or something, it was a stick shift tunnel ram car early. He, uh, my dad had the, had the third ever um, tunnel ram from uh, Phil Lyon. Oh, wow. That's and awesome. um, wow. my point is, is that, so I remember going, I remember going to an open test at Carlsbad and Mickey Thompson was there with um, both the Mach 1 funny cars, one of them, the, the red and the blue, but one was only uh, painted blue. They hadn't painted the other one yet. Uh, Jim Lieberman was, was leaving with the, the Jungle Jim deal. Wow. And I remember sitting in a, in a, in a dragster, and um, my dad talked to the guy, and like, hey, can, can like, one of my son sits, and he's like, whatever you do, don't touch anything, right, whatever. Right, right. And I sat in, the first thing I did was freaking grab that wheel, and he's like, stop, 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 stop. But <laughs> my point is, is that right then it was like, I'm gonna, I'm going to drive a freaking fuel car. I mean, I, you know, drag racing was my dream. Growing up with it, uh, my father made it to the um, uh, the finals at the Hot Rod Nationals in 1969. He made it to the final round, kicked the drive shaft out, but they ran backwards at Riverside Raceway. So he's running quarter mile passes, and he, he was like, man, you know, I'm spending days making three or four passes at, I think back then, like 11 seconds or something, yeah, right? Right, which was fast back yeah. then, yeah. So uh, he's like, you know, they got this whole three mile racetrack. So he, so he got into road racing. So I was fortunate enough to kind of tag along and see a bunch of different stuff. And, um, you know, my dad probably raced, man, four or five or six times a year. Uh, but I remember um, working on everything from the 68 Camaro on the drag car cleaning. Uh, whatever, but also I remember being at Lions when I think I was seven years old when uh, Garlitz cut his foot off, and I remember the fog coming in, wow. which always came there, and and it got so heavy they could, couldn't race sometimes, and you know going to OCIR for the 32 and 64 funny car fields, you know when I was in Cub Scouts because we yeah. would we would sell tickets and go. Right. I mean wow. it's just like I'm enamored, but I got to also go to. Um, I remember in 1970, the same age, going to um, the NASCAR race and seeing the, these winged, crazy Daytonas come down a mile-long straightaway under the Champion oh, yeah. Bridge. I remember that. And going, that's just cool, right? Yeah. And so um, I was really just uh, enamored with everything. And, and Ascot was there. Uh, you know, off a of major freeway, you had all these drag strips and road courses. It, I mean, it, it was, it, I was spoiled in that aspect. Yeah. Um, but it, it just embedded in me, um, some way, somehow, I'll, I'm making a living racing, and I'm going to do it as a driver, which that didn't really work out. But the point is, is like, I was, I was hooked. And I really wasn't hooked in any one thing in particular. I just wanted to race for a living. But I will say, growing up at all the drag strips, because I went to Irwindale and, and Again, Irondale, Carlsbad, OCIR, Lions. There is something, you know, nitro is just addicting. Everybody jokes about it, but yeah. it, it's just the sound, the smell. It's just, it's, um, uh, it, it's, um, it, it's violent and poetry kind of all mixed in at once, right? Yeah. And so um, uh, that was very addicting to me. And, and growing up around seeing all those guys and, um, you know, and there's so much, so many local superstars back then. Yeah. You know, on the West Coast, more funny cars than, than dragsters. Yeah. But um, you know, and there, but there's a lot kind of in between all of that. But um, you know, it's just um, really cool times. Oh, yeah. you know, what a man. time to grow yeah. up in yeah. racing! I mean, that oh, yeah. all yeah. of it was just so. Yeah. It was all being pioneered too at that yeah. time. And now, now to get where you are, and the technology is so advanced. It, yeah. I'm gonna roll this That's towards awesome. you though. Wild. So, That's so how how did we get into racing? You caught a time frame, and I, I want you to kind of 
talk about it a little bit, when suddenly the import cars exploded. Yeah. You, you know, you had Lisa Kubo, you had Sean Carlson, you had yeah. all these people, and you were right in the mix yeah, of we that. Right I mean, it was small. massive. Yeah. It had a short run, and it's yeah. kind of on the comeback. But what was that all like? It was, you know, it was just awesome because everything was new and groundbreaking, and we were all trying to develop stuff and make the cars faster and more reliable, which is reliable is the key. It's They're still always what, fast. It's still what we're doing. <laughs> you know, it hasn't stopped. You know, as we grow with the horsepower, you know, you try to. But how, how did that take off? I mean, you you were at the beginning of it. Um, A lot of people don't even realize that they watch all your YouTube channels. Yeah, we were you right were at the beginning. You were at yeah, the beginning. We were first battle imports, all of them. We were we were out there racing. You know, I just, you know, I started in a little Honda shop, so I found a little love for the little engines and, and turbocharging them and making more power. And then once we heard there was this race in California, this battle imports and people come from Japan and all over the world, you know, it was like, we got to be there, you know? So some buddies and I would cruise down and, uh, and I, and I was hooked. I'm still hooked because it's, it's, it's similar to the early days you were talking about where, you know, all this stuff was being developed and we're learning to, to make the cars fast. Um, we're still there and now, you know, we're starting to really hone them in now and, and really dial stuff. So at the height of that, what was probably like the craziest thing? Because that scene was incredible at one time. I mean, everything was crazy. Seeing the first nine second pass, eight second pass, seven second pass, six second pass, now five second passes, you know, uh, these little engines making power, you know, making the power they do it, yeah. it's just not supposed to be done you know a four cylinder shouldn't make 2000 horsepower but they do yeah. six cylinder shouldn't make 3000 horsepower but they do and i don't see it slowing down you know um the 2jz six cylinder record is just barely a tick slower than pro mod you know yeah. and you're talking a production stuff so i mean that technology has just fascinated me and uh you know, and it's it's that underdog thing too, where you know they're not supposed to do that. So when you put one up against something really fast, um, seeing it come out on top, it's always really cool. And I like to be on that side and pushing that stuff. Well, seriously about that cool about that market is, um, you know, kind of you know when they started running some of the the quote tuner cars that became rear wheel drive cars, they kind of became pro mod cars with just a, a tuner motor. It really That's wasn't kind of fair. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I was you wearing a Jeff Letts hat. I was joking with Jeff. Yeah. It's like, you know, when you watch some of the, the, the street outlaws on some of the really iffy places, I said, if anybody ever brought a four wheel drive anything where it could just hook up and, and go with, with an automatic transmission, right. it would win most of, or a large bunch of the races because it's not about the speed, it's, it's about how quick it is that first little bit once you yeah. get out. Yeah. Yeah. And I got a funny story about talking about Hondas. I, I was cruising. A uh, buddy of mine that knows uh, CP Pistons and Carrillo oh, yeah. Rods yeah. Um, had a had a turbo Porsche, and I'd come and visit him, visit him out when coming to the West Coast for races. And we were cruising down Beach Boulevard in Huntington Beach, um, and we were uh, I mean just going for a drive, having like you know midnight coffee and waffles or something, right? And so we were cruising, and this is a really fast car at the time. This is you know you know several years ago, and kind of dead. And there were these two two guys cruising in a clapped out Honda, right? I mean, it was clapped out, and you know we're, we're trying to stop light, and it's kind of like you know, you know, just up against the limiter, you know. And so, so we're playing around, and we we line up, the light turns green, and again, this turbo is fast, freaking. We got by the, by the, the the second gear, he had half a car on us, and I mean that thing was gone, but. The point is, is that those things to me have always been um, quicker than they are faster it, because that's the deal. Just, just, and this is a front wheel drive car, not yeah. an all wheel drive, but it just hooked up and went. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, you know, I'm guessing by looking at them, you know, they they probably don't have a whole bunch of money in the car, but they have a whole lot of money in the induction system. That's and it. and the, the mindset is like, I can get it, I can get a go to the junkyard and get another one for 1500 bucks so i'm going to run it until it goes right. i'm not going to spend too much money on cranks and rods that's, <laughs> just keep that's, putting that's what it is i yeah. mean it yeah. is and you just get the bias and the trash control set up right and they just oh man they it, it, it was they uh, do. fortunately nobody saw that <laughs> somebody did yeah, yeah, yeah somebody. <laughs> well now if they, if they, hey if, if, so this is this is pre um you so know camera it. phones right <laughs> if it happened you know the guy in the passenger seat would have been doing right, this right, and have been yeah. like like that yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, for sure man. so brent but i love it 
That's cool. So you've got a car that you've been working on, a couple of them actually yeah, I want to ask about, yeah. that it's been a long process, kind of like Dentley, my truck, yeah. you know, but the S2000, yeah. where where are we at with that? Uh, the S2000, with that? Um, so, so I did, so, so I did get it so out. So tell, tell everybody about the car first of okay, all. Okay, so the car is um, a three-quarter chassis, um, S2000, Liberty five-speed trans, 488 rear end, you know, and then still the F20C four-cylinder with a 83 millimeter turbo. A little turbo. Yeah, yeah, just, yeah. 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 <laughs> you know, I, I do got goals to like, you know, run bottom sevens, high sixes with it. Um, I got one of Nick style slipper clutches in it, yep. Nick Bonafonte. Yep. I'm going back to that. Um, so I'm in the process of learning the clutch and stuff. And uh, I took it out and tried to test it last year. Um, had a, the clutch kind of vibrated the whole thing and wiped out the flywheel so i'm i'm in the process of working that yeah. out but uh well now you might have a connection goal. to a guy that knows something yeah. about it yeah and i pulled him aside and we had <laughs> now a you know a guy that knows a guy <laughs> that's it that's it so the last you know in bradenton i pulled him aside after everything had died down and he had had a moment you know to crack one open and we were just <laughs> chilling and in other words you said hey i know you just lost a quarter million dollars yeah. but yeah. i got a question but i got a question <laughs> and he's like you know hit me up anytime and feel free to facetime and i'll walk you through it so i'm gonna get back in the clutch on that and then try to get it back to the track and try to make things happen for my, for my little shop you know so we've been going forever and i got a couple more fun questions and this one this one actually popped up a couple times so Rick, what brand of hair gel do you use? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, as I'm getting older, it's getting thinner. So it's, it's uh, the, uh, I don't even know, to be honest with you. My wife gets it, um, but it, it's pretty heavy uh, because I don't always like to wear hats that get headaches. So it, it has to be strong enough to withstand, you know, some wind resistance, yeah, right? Yeah. So, um, uh, it's for sure it's on the firm side it's, that's all i know um but um and I, I heard it's not white so what color is no, it no no yeah see so i'm not, I'm not oh, 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 white, i want to lean i want to lean into that i want to lean into that so at the superstar shootout we've got speed sport right above cletus yeah. And Ralph Shaheen just threw you right under the I bus. I know, man. I was all like, hey, man, we're getting some track time. And, and yeah, he, he's all like, yeah, that's uh, Rick Ware with the white hair. I'm like, white hair? <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, like, it's already tough because I'm already the same age as old people, right? And so yeah, I saw somebody wearing that shirt. And, um, yeah, what'd you call it? It was Battleship Blonde, man. <laughs> I'm blonde. I got blonde hair, more than blonde hair. So if, it's, if it looks white, it's, just, it's, it's not gray. It's not white. It's Battleship Blonde. And I'm going to stick to that. Funny, I, I put yeah. that in my notes so I knew what uh, color I knew. Yeah. Might have to be a t shirt. Yeah, right? exactly. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm getting it's, it over here. Yeah. It's just rolling in there. Great. Battleship yeah. Blonde. <laughs> Battleship I'll Blonde. Get there. Exactly. So, this was actually a question I, I seen a bunch, and it's kind of, I'm going to say it's for me, and it's like, when are you adding Cletus to the team? Well, we feel like Cletus is now a major part of the team. I saw a lot of that out there. He, well, he, he's for sure joined, he's part of the family. He's joined he, the family. He, he's the, he's he's the main man the now. Yeah. yeah, just how much we put in the work is going to, I mean, you got a life and you're pretty busy too. Yeah. So the yeah. question now is how we can take all these crazy people and intertwine them, right? <laughs> Integrate everything. Yeah, not have things explode too much, right? <gasps> which, <laughs> oh, which brings me right into to this very same thing, because a lot of these questions were, were intertwined. What's yeah. it been like uh, yeah. actually working doing my YouTube. I've never oh. ever let go of that because it's like the people that watch, they know it's me. And yeah. that week was so crazy. You said, just give it to me. And you did. Yeah, I didn't you see did it. it. I didn't see a choice because you were so busy. Yeah. Once I saw kind of what was going on, I was like, you know, this, gotta, this is my place. This is what I'm supposed to do right now. For some reason, I got dropped here and that's with, with no underwear. So, it was, uh, yeah, with no underwear. <laughs> Thanks, my, my Speedos. <laughs> but, uh, uh, you know, it, it turned into a lot of fun. At first, it was really stressful because you're like, well, for one, he's got sponsors. He's got a lot, a lot of eyes on him. You know, with myself, I can throw up whatever. I don't have to answer to anybody. But you answer to people. Yeah. So Mainly I was this really guy. really trying to be thoughtful. And there's a quarter million dollars on the line. And there's a quarter million dollars on the line. Yeah. 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 So. So 
I just entered with that mindset, you know, and wanting to do a good job for you. And you're a lot like me in a lot of ways and you see the world like as I do in a lot of ways. So that part was easy and I just wanted to make good videos and good racing videos. And I, I, I think that's one of the best drag racing series I've ever put together in my entire life. And I mean, it's stuff I can go back to and watch probably over and over. It was really good. Could you see yourself doing it some more, working with Absolutely. me and Rick? Absolutely. I, uh, I really do, just because it was just so it, much it, fun. It was really weird for me because, again, I'm very protective because I know, yeah. you know, the people tune in, they know it's me, but Your because it was again. you, again, I do feel like, you know, we share a lot of everything's all, we always see the positive. You do yeah. too. He, yep. he definitely does. So, And that's what I love to share with the world too, you know, to give them inspiration and hope and joy and they can check out of whatever's going on and they can, you know, well, strive. If you don't view your life as glass half full, especially in motorsports, yeah. You're you're gonna, you're gonna have so many crummy days. Oh, I mean, you oh, know, yeah. you, you've got to take what little bit of positive you can to carry you through. Otherwise, you're just, I mean, it's just, it's an inherently tough business. Yeah. It, it, from losing your luggage like you did earlier this week. <laughs> I mean, you you just travel so much and so much mm -hmm. stuff's going on. You got you got to take little rays of sunshine. Yeah. That's and for sure, it allowed him to concentrate on his job. Not that he couldn't have done it yeah. anyway. But the point is, he did every you know he did everything better. Right, so yeah. it was definitely an asset. Yeah. And to his point, he did a really good job because he, like, you know, his format is a little bit chaotic, but that's his brand, and it, it needed to be controlled chaos, and it, and it was. <laughs> right, yeah. it was because it was well, off the hook some yeah. of the stuff that was going on for that week. Yeah, oh, it was. That it was, was. It was an amazing vibe, an amazing situation. And yeah, it really opened up a lot of people's eyes to fuel racing, to Rick Ware. And it's led us into where we're at now here, the Daytona yeah. 500. So it's been a, a super neat yeah. deal. We've been going for a long time here, and I know we need to get to the end. But that whole thing, what you allowed, and I, I kind of got a couple things on this. So I'm going to look at the camera and tell this. So when we got to Cletus's shop, put the car on the dyno, did all that, guess what? He didn't know that I did that until <laughs> after the fact. I knew something was up. I didn't quite know exactly what was up. All I know is, is uh, you know, you had Jimbo walking around like a cat on a hot tin oh, roof. Oh, we did. We so did. It, um, you know, that uh, I knew something was up, and I knew there was some so some I, risk involved. I did so. discuss it with Robbie. Yeah, Rick's super busy all the time, so I discussed it with Robbie. But where I was going with with that is, I think what we did in racing Ruby was show millions of people how fast yeah. a nitro car is because there's so many people that ruby is a fast car but and a lot of those people don't watch what we do and we exposed millions of people to how fast a nitro yeah. car really is that was yeah. pretty cool you know and, and that you know the only you know and it's not a downside but the, the only downside to national events are if you go to a pro mod race Freaking every car is fast, and they're out yeah. of control and sideways. And it, it is such a great race. Same thing with the outlaw street yeah, yeah. stuff. Um, but as soon as a nitro car makes a pass, it, it's it's kind of like seeing quick airplanes and then seeing an F eighteen go by or right. something when they're doing the flybys or something yeah. at Daytona. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, wow, yeah. it, it's just a whole different world. And yeah. um, it for sure showed that <laughs> by how far you let it go out in a second and a half. Yeah. And, and then, you know, the, the, the percussion freaking shut the car off, <laughs> right, right? So, of uh, Ruby, yeah. so, um, but yeah, it's, um, yeah, there's some potential downside. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, I mean, but, it, but that's it what made it cool. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, we're not only will we do it again, we're going to build some other stuff just so we can do right. more of yeah. it, right? Yeah, yeah, where we're not so, using yeah. our primary yeah. race car. Exactly. Yeah. So that, that was the only, you know, again, you know, we consume the other our spare chassis yeah. you know, yeah. from yeah. the last yeah. being on on this side of the world you know seeing what you guys accomplished there we do want more you know as, as right. fans and stuff yeah right? you want to see where it can go and see yeah. see what else we all can come up with it what so, else you well, I'll go ahead Rick. Well, we haven't announced we're, we're, uh, you haven't announced the date of the when we do the past in the uh, the opposite direction right no we haven't told that one yet <laughs> <laughs> Look at the eyeballs. Yeah, <laughs> <I'm> like, <"What?" laughs> yeah we're, we're, we're going to start 
Cletus on the non-prep end, and I'll be on the prep end, and we're going to meet in the middle somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> oh. All right, I have one more question, but I want you to, you to get whatever you got before I ask my last question here. Um, one of the questions someone had, has is, uh, who do you see as your biggest competition this year? In what series? He's only in all of in them. In all of them. <laughs> Everybody that shows up. Everyone that shows up. Because you know true. we're we're um, uh, you know we're we're fortunate to participate in the upper levels of all the different classes we run, and you know uh, you know this is your first NASCAR race, but yeah. do you see anybody here that's not prepared or yeah. does or doesn't have funding? No. I mean we're Everyone. we're it's you know technically we're. You know, we're the, we're the Davids, we're not the Goliaths, right? Um, you know, it, it, we're probably, budget-wise, we're, we're more realistic in the other, you know, facets of things that we race at. But, you know, going to the pro shootout and going into the first race at Gainesville, I mean, who, who are you going to pick that's, like, doesn't have their act together? Yeah. And so, um, I, I, I mean, I don't... I don't think you have uh, it's the whole the series you know yeah. all the series of motorsports right now are extremely competitive yeah. and um you know yeah. if yeah. we can beat somebody you know you, you don't want to be last yeah and yeah. you know so we want to be somebody and um you know uh that's tough to do sometimes and then my final question was how many races do you do in a year oh that's a good question yeah well, as the, as the, the company, um, I, I know we enter um, over 110 events, I think, or something. Wow. You know, <laughs> you know, you know, 110 <laughs> events. So, you know, I mean, just rough math, there's, oh. you know, there, there's 20 plus in fuel, and there's, there's 36 points in NASCAR times two, and you have the other series. Um, yeah, so, I mean, you, I mean, it's by volume, you get there, right? Um, yeah. I mean, bravo for what you're doing in racing in general, you know, and all the people you're inspiring. It's that is by far nobody else incredible. does what does what he does. Yeah, all the different series. Yeah, that's so you know, some of the weekends we have. You know, last year I think we had. I think there's one weekend we had five different events going on. And um, I mean, a marketing standpoint. It, it, so so it. so I mean, it, so here is, you're talking about. Yeah. You know, you're profitable. You stay float. So the one thing that that we can do on a not always Monday, but Tuesday, you know, um, uh, you know, we have really good graphic guys in house. Uh, we got this guy, Christopher Analak, that's an awesome video guy You're that, awesome that puts there. together killer, <laughs> killer awesome. stuff. And, and we wear yeah. this dude out, right? He, you know, talk about somebody thinking they want to be involved in motorsports, you know? <laughs> so, um, the, uh, you know, be, you know, heck somewhere, um, I forgot where we were at, but you know, uh, we actually, um, won our first flat track race with, with Briar in Ohio, a mile and a half from uh, we ran with the Summit car at, at, Norwalk. at Norwalk. And wow. there are two other things going on. And, um, you know, I, I pick kind of what makes sense for if we either ha have an issue or a problem uh, or there's a new sponsor or something. So I, mean, I, I didn't get to any of his freaking three wins last year, and I didn't get to any of Breyer's wins either. Um, and I hate it, but I, you know, I'm glad for the team. Uh, but so on Mondays and Tuesdays, we, he has videos put together, you know, for us to be able to go send um, uh, podium shots, you know, hoisting wallies, host, host, hoisting trophies. You know, um, you know, he was overseas in the Supercross when we won uh, events overseas this year. And, um, uh, and then, you know, if we can't get on podiums and, and, you know, our wins in NASCAR or an IndyCar, we're still there collecting the data and there's still, still a storyline and, uh, that differentiates us. And I know, uh, well, I, I, I'm with you on the emails, right? And so yeah. I just happened to look at some emails. We got an email from Edelbrock. They were so happy that, uh, we were running good, even mm -hmm. though technically they're, they're only, um, uh, you know they're 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 a part of the RWR family and everything we do and they send people to different races all over. But you know part of what I try to do is you know they're part of the the drag race world and, and that's yeah. um, uh, they make all kinds of products for everything, yeah. right? But yeah. um, they're focused on that and so you know they love the fact that you're here and he's here and uh, you know Parts Plus is here and, and they're following what we're doing. So what that allows me to do is on Tuesday I got people that are happy. 
right? Yeah. Because I'm telling them a story because they have to go tell their story of like, well, why are we spending money here or there? Well, here's one of the multiple reasons. So yeah. um, it's, a, again, it's a lot of work. And, and ironically, I spend less time racing and uh, logistics with Stacy, who who is our, our, our NHRA team manager, you know, boots on the ground, but also does does the uh, um, uh, the, the hotels and rental cars for everything we do with the exception of uh, the IndyCar scenario. Um, so, so you know, you got to kind of be careful what you wish for or pray for because you may get it. So yeah. we're, we're involved <laughs> a lot. So that's really cool. I, I miss more of the cool stuff um, than, I, than, than I would have ever thought. But um, uh, uh, it, it, I do believe our success is based on the fact that we can keep this big ball rolling yeah. because it, if it doesn't, it's hard to make things work when you amortize all your people on one building in one scenario as opposed to multiple things. Now, I can say over the course of time, it's, it's been tough sometimes because some, some years we've had the bulk of everything suck. Yeah, <laughs> you right, know, right. Well, I mean, in all honesty. And so, um, but it, what, it's what sets us apart, you know, uh, and able to survive because um, there has never been another business. This is all I've ever done to make a living. And, you know, I, I say a little of that tongue in cheek because it's, it's we, we're surviving. Right. right? You know, right. Um, and obviously, in NASCAR side, we have charters that have become valuable, but they're only worth something if you sell them. Right. Right. And when right. we're here going racing, it's like, you know, I joke about it. it's like getting your your dream hot rod or your your dream house and have it go up in value. It's only value if you sell it and you give it up. Yeah. Right. It does. It's not. Yeah. Then it's gone. Yeah. It's gone. Yeah, and so, gone. you know, so um, but we just keep digging. Yeah. And we really appreciate what you're doing for motorsports. Ah. It's just it's awesome. So it's funny when you said, you know, you had five events going on on one weekend. Makes me think, hadn't yeah. thought of it in this way, but a little bit like Monster Jam. You know, it's, yeah. it's funny, you know, people think, oh man, Grape Digger's in my town this week. Yep. Grape Digger's in like 10 towns on yeah, the same yeah, exactly. weekend, you know, yeah. and you're kind of doing that. Except uh, I, I can't duplicate you. That's, yeah. that's the problem, right? <laughs> right. There's right, only right, so right, many right. claiming looking in. Right, you know. right. But with, with that, kind of where I was headed with that, so You've got obviously the, the NASCAR team, the NHRA team, IndyCar team, World Supercross. You're doing some Mazda racing. You're, I mean, you're doing so many things. And one of the questions was, and this is the one I'm gonna wrap up with because uh, Robbie, Robbie's gonna watch this and come grab me and choke me. <laughs> What's next? What's next? Is it another, is it another NHRA car? Is it a uh, third charter? For third NASCAR, yeah. is it is it another Indy car? You know the NASCARs are. Uh, excuse me, the, the, the NASCAR charters are out of my reach. So I, I'm fortunate enough to, um, you know, ha have got where we at on on that aspect. You know the um, we really tried um, several years ago pre-COVID. Um, you know we ran the Asia Le Mans series because I wanted to get back to to Le Mans, which has always been a dream of mine. Uh, we won the uh, Asia Le Mans World Championship, which got us a seat guaranteed into the 24 hours of Le Mans. COVID came, messed everything up. Yep. Um, that's kind of come and gone. I, I would like to do something uh, more overseas when the time is right in, in cars, like we have done with the motorcycle mm -hmm. scenario. Um, we're pretty tapped out right now. We need to make sure that we continue to um, uh, keep making progress with the NASCAR scenario. What makes the most sense um, is to add a funny car. And I only say that to, to the, the standpoint of, it's one thing if you start an entity that's a whole separate, you know, um, it's, it's completely different people, completely different set of um, uh, rules and cars, et cetera, and going somewhere else. Right. We're already going to 20 NHRA yep. events, yep. right? Um, if we added, a funny car from the business standpoint it's like when we added a second you know cup car you know there's an economy of scale you yep. know we didn't get twice as much of everything right. we got you know one and a half amount of everything yep. so if we got a funny car um you know uh, you need some more depth but you know the the, the cylinder heads the cranks the, the motors the clutches all of those things are shared right right um you would need another trailer um but it would it'd be a shared hospitality yeah. already. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we've had some requests, and I think there's some sponsor you know scenarios mm -hmm. into that. Um, 
that's probably what, what would make the most sense. However, in saying that, um, it's still baby steps because we're not where we need to be with the field program right. first. I can't right. take away from that. Um, yeah. Now, it's not lost on anybody that, you know, Nikki is, you know, a funny car race also. Yeah. Um, but he also is really good with um, uh, clutches. And so right now, um, to be a single car top field team, um, you know, technically there hasn't been a championship won in the last decade by a single car team. Justin Ashley came really close to doing yep. it. Um, you know, I would hope that we come close to it. But it, it's tough when you don't have uh, an in-house ally um, taking away some of your competitors. You right. Know, it would have been nice if the tracks where we really had it going on to have a teammate that was also putting other people on, yep. the, on the trailer. Yep. But um, it, that would be the, 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 the most natural progression. But I don't know. I don't have those answers yet. And we're, we're pretty capped out. But they're... Um, you know, we're, we're racing, and yep. I love racing. Yep. And if it makes sense, we want to do it. But to your point, Robbie's pretty much um, been aggressive <laughs> on, on a, like, hey, you know, it, it's, yeah. you know. And the problem is when you when you get um, you, you know you get everything lined up and racing inherently there's there's issues whether it's sponsor issues or s more stuff gets tore up than you know. And yeah. you know, we actually had a really good year last year in Top Fuel. Until um, the last three races. Well, but, but we consumed more cars yeah. and more parts in three races than we did all year long. Yeah. Yeah. And so, you know, going along um, from a business standpoint, it was, you know, it remains to be seen uh, with the people asked about being profitable. Yeah. We were on the, on the road to potentially being profitable. Yeah. The last three races of the year, no, not so much. And yeah. so, um, but, you know, we, we've brought in more funding and, and more stuff for, for this year in uh, but, you know, we're going to be spending more. We're adding yeah. people, et cetera. So yeah. um, uh, we have some plans and dreams that I would like to do, but we're, we're going to continue, you know, on the, the flat track side. Uh, if we're not on the podium or close to winning, um, you know, we're disappointed. Yeah. Um, you know, this year I'm going to be disappointed if we're not making rounds on a regular basis yeah. and feel. Yeah. Uh, NASCAR, we're, we're making headway. Um, you know, unfortunately, NASCAR is only one guy on a podium, right, you know, or, right. or sometimes they don't even have podiums, right? right. You know, uh, they're just uh, individual winners. Um, uh, but, you know, we podiumed in, in, in IMSA, and um, so we just need to continue to make sure that RWR as a whole is um, competing for wins and getting those, those uh, great shots that the yeah. sponsors love to see. Exactly. It's the year of the loud pedal. It's the year, it's of, the the year of the loud pedal. pedal, man. It is. Yes, sir. It is. Across all, all uh, categories. <laughs> so if y'all have made it this far, thank you. you. If you like this, comment down below. Tell us what you liked about doing this. Yeah. No promises here, but we're hoping as the year goes, from time to time, we can sit down with Rick and kind of go over all the things happening Rick Ware Racing, what's happening in the racing world, and uh, man, yeah. this has been fun. This has been awesome. It's been awesome. I love it. It's right. been it's awesome having PFI Speed Brent with us, cool. and uh, it won't be the last time you see him, that's for dang sure. And hopefully the rain goes away and we're racing Daytona. 500 miles tomorrow, that's the plan. That's the plan. Thank, Thank you, you guys for tuning in. Thanks for checking in, guys.